Hey guys, what's up? This is the first official episode of the Welding Tip Show on Ustream. Uh, trying to do this live and kind of add a, a cool aspect to the podcast. I have been doing a Welding Tips podcast and I think I want to just kind of change it over to a show. Um, I think we could probably uh, answer a lot more questions a lot faster this way and then just be a really, really cool uh, way to do the show, I think. So that is it. We are live now. I am Andy, your host, the At Home Welder. And we're just going to go ahead and dive right into this. Today I want to talk about MIG versus TIG. And I don't want to do it from a uh, specifics of the how each machine works kind of thing. I want to really approach it as uh, a, a, a hobbyist welder kind of look at it. I want to take a look at it from the home from a home welder standpoint. You know, if you're going to pick up one of these machines, take it home and want to weld with it today, what are the things that you need to consider? What are the pros and cons of each different unit? And so I just want to go ahead and and that's how I want to approach it. And I want to just go ahead and, and dive right into this. And uh, then hopefully we can answer some questions here in a little bit. Um, so we'll start with MIG welders. You know, what are the pros of MIG welders? You know, MIG welders are great. 99% uh, of the welding that I do is with a MIG welder and a small MIG welder at that. Um, they're the most popular and easily accessible units there are. I mean, you know, obviously there's bigger units that are uh, take a little bit more or they're a little more involved. But if you want to get started today, you can literally go down to any sort of tool rental place or any Home Depot that has a rental store, a tool rental store uh, on it and rent a welder and you can rent them for as low as like 30 bucks for a couple hours i think or four hours um that's great i mean and that'll give you everything you need so it, it really takes no skill at all i mean it's literally you know you it is a gun you know you have a gun here and a little red trigger you pull the trigger as soon as you pull the trigger uh that wire f starts to come out and when it touches the metal you're welding it's as simple as that now of course there's more technique involved but uh to actual actually be able to get started uh, they are the the best way to get started uh, most units uh, all the smaller units any unit you can rent uh, from a Home Depot or, or a hardware store you're gonna be able to plug into a normal wall socket and that to me is huge I mean it's literally a plug-and-play uh, kind of machine you can literally just pick up a box they weigh about 50 pounds some are less uh, so it's very portable uh, Take it, set it down somewhere, plug it into a wall socket, and start welding. That's uh, that's pretty impressive to me. So it's very very easy to uh, to get started and and, and very very portable. Uh, most of these uh, uh, smaller units, most of them, uh, can be converted to use gas as well. Now any big unit is going to use gas too, uh, but some of the smaller units they they may not be able to. Uh, you may not be able to hook up a regulator up to, and a regulator is just that little gauge that's on top of a gas tank. Um, so being able to use gas as well is great because it means you can have a nice cleaner weld. Uh, you'll be able to weld some some thicker material a little bit better. And you know it's just a it, it takes you to a new level. Uh, whereas if you are not welding with gas you're using a different kind of wire, a flux core wire. But we'll go into that another time. Um, so that's a that's a very very good to be able to uh, hook up gas to most of those things now a few of the downsides to uh, MIG welding is you some of the smaller machines that I'm talking about you're not going to be able to do heavier gauge material uh, meaning you know if you want to do something kind of structural or anything that's actually going to need to support a lot of weight um, you just can't do it with these smaller units and in, in fact I think most of the smaller units uh, I think it's up to a quarter inch thick before they tell you you need to move on to a bigger machine meaning you can if you had a quarter inch uh, piece of plate you know you would be fine but anything thicker than that you don't want to weld because it's not going to hold um, especially for newbies and beginners uh, there's a tendency to just really glob on that weld simply because you're pulling a trigger and as long as you're pulling that trigger that welding wire is coming out and you're just gooping up that weld making it bigger bigger and bigger and something maybe it's a something about our, our our man brains but or just your brain in general that tells you if you see more weld on there automatically it is a good weld well that is not the case at all but it's very easy to uh, get a weld that looks like it's a good weld uh, simply by gooping it up and uh, MIG welders are great for doing that great for quickly just globbing up that weld 
Now, so that is one bad thing. It's very easy to mistake a good weld for a bad one, um, or a bad weld for a good one. Excuse me. Uh, if you, if some of the smaller units, if you can't use gas, because um, I'm usually all for going the cheapest route. If you want to get into something, if you buy the cheapest units you can find, you're not going to be able to hook gas up to them. I mean, there's some pretty inexpensive units out there. Not that they're bad units. They're just you know the options just aren't there. Uh, you can't hook gas up to them, and you're, that limits you to just doing um, just normal steel, and maybe some cast uh, iron type stuff or, or, or cast steel. Uh, but that's really all you're going to be able to do. You're not. You're never going to be able to do any other types of materials or anything heavy, um, simply because you're not using gas. You need to have gas to be able to do those different kind of materials, because uh, the heat and the bonding that the gas uh, gives you with the wire. So those are some of the cons, you know. But if you're just getting started and you're getting starting on a budget and you want to get started very very quickly, uh, without a lot of hassle with other things, MIGs are the way to go. Um, you know, we're about to get into TIG here in just a second, but TIG, there's a lot more involved which you're going to see, but MIGs are just a very, very good way to get into something very quickly, and if you don't have any experience at all, I definitely recommend getting into twi to MIG. So let's, uh, let's go into TIG here real quick. Some of the pros of TIG welding are, well, you can do anything basically you know uh, TIG welders are the most widely configured units there are I mean you can find a TIG you can configure a TIG welder to do anything uh, any kind of metals any any kind of it doesn't matter whatever whatever it is you're doing uh, all, the only thing that that changes is you, you might need to use different gases you'll use different rods uh, welding rods it's not a spool of wire like it's on a MIG. It's actually a uh, individual little rods that you hold until you use them up. Then you grab another rod and use them up. A lot like soldering, uh, or if you do any kind of, uh, you know, plumbing that kind of thing, uh, or copper pipes that kind of thing. It's the same type of thing where you're actually holding the wire and the heat and using both hands to do it. Now they are extremely precise, extremely clean. Uh, it's just a very, very uh, I used to describe it as the upper crust of welding. It's uh, it's kind of the the high end version of well of a high end form of welding. Uh, you can do it in a t-shirt and shorts if you want. You're not going to get spatter all over you. It's very 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 clean. Um, the end product is usually something that you don't have to mess with. Uh, whereas MIG, you usually have to do some sort of cleaning, or or there's usually some spatter. Or TIG, there is virtually no cleaning. Uh, some cleaning is involved depending on what materials you're, you're welding, but uh, the finished product is just usually a beautiful finish. Um, and with TIG, you know, you can weld anything. Like I said, you're really just changing your materials. Uh, it does take a lot more up front to get started, though. Uh, it takes a lot more skill. It's not really, it's not necessarily a plug-and-play type of machine like a MIG welder is. Uh, 